do you mean by uh, okay i am answering uh, eric's question and uh, uh, what do you mean by unique volume numbers uh, for mounting uh, volumes Ah, okay. Ah, yes, talk to everybody, not privately, <laughs> Eric, sorry. Uh, I don't understand the last line. Why do you have that last line? You can add, you can, uh, here I'm going to give you a, a tip. You can suppress the unique and instead you can write sort mi minus u. Let me show. Okay, I'm going to write uh, another form for this. So grep minus R for recursive, the regular expression volume in all files, and of course subdirectories because it's minus R. We are going to cut minus the field separator is going to be the semicolon. It could be this one, so the same as you do, and get the third, the third field. And you can do sort minus u. Sort minus u is exactly the same than doing this. Sort minus u, and also you can add this flag minus n. Minus n is for the sorting to be numeric. If you see that your sorting is not numeric, so you are getting 0, 1, 10, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 9. If you do a sort minus n, the 10, number 10 is going to go to the end. So Eric, can you try this this way, please?
Okay. Thank you, Eric. So next question. If the script uh, if the script is in the same directory and you are doing a recursive uh, a recursive search and also with an asterisk, um, you are going to search the script also. So it's going to be included in the search. Maybe you could write your script in a different directory and run from from the directory where you have your files. For example, you could write the script in the previous directory, in the parent directory to, to, to that one. Exactly, you must run when in the data directory, but the script can be in another directory. One easy part would be to put the directory in the parent directory of that directory. So you could run this way. Look at the screen, please. For example, I could uh, I could run the script with this construction. Two dots mean parent directory. Uh, my script uh, and well, I I I am in the in the directory where the data is. The script doesn't need to be in the data folder, not necessarily. Don't forget that you have to give permissions to the script to be executed. If not, you are going to get uh, uh, this error message, permission denied. In, in order to avoid that, you must give uh, uh, execution permissions. You do that by using this comment. Change mode plus X, it means add execution permissions. Um, for example, if your script is in the parent directory, my script. If you don't do that, you are going to get a permission denied when you try to execute your script. Nancy was asking uh, about how to write a batch script. Basically a batch script is a text file with the comments in sequence that you would run if you were going to type them one by one. 
one mm, is not mandatory, but it's good to start a script with this line. It's a commentary line, but it, this line is, it has uh, the comment symbol, the exclamation symbol, and this green bash. This uh, line is called the uh, shebang. I don't know why, but it's called the shebang. Basically, it's telling the system to use bean bash as the interpreter of the script. Anyway, in batch, obviously the default is bash. It's, mand it's more mandatory when you are going to to use, for example, a pair script. If you, are, if you are writing a pair script, you need the, the, in this case, this is mandatory because it's pair. But the default is, the default in bash is bash. But anyway, as a good practice, is very is recommended to start a script with this line, and then all the comments that you are going to execute line by line. Let me check Taylor. Mm. Oh. One moment. Taylor, can you try without the pipe uh, WC minus L to see what is the difference? Could you say that you get 351 files? Maybe the all, not all those files have that word. That uh, sex uh, semicolon F. So the total files are 353, but only 351. Uh, match your query. Exactly, the comment by Yohai is, is right. It, it may be the, the case. That's why I suggest that you just run as a test uh, without the WC minus L to see what are the two foreigners that are in, in the list?
Exacto. Exacto. That's the reason that uh, for the offset of by two. Okay, any more questions? Uh, okay, Parinas, that uh, uh, you are going to get this error if the script doesn't have permissions, execution permissions. So you give the execution permission with this command. Basically, this command is change mode. Change mode is how you change permissions. This plus X is add X, which is execution to my script. So when, when you write your script, usually the permissions are this. After you add X, uh, the, the X, when you add the execution permits, you get this. So at this moment, the, the script can be executed. Well, there is also a trick to execute uh, a script that doesn't have uh, uh, execution permissions. You just, in your command prompt, you just type bash and the name of your script, for example, my script. In using this way, you can execute the script despite that it doesn't have execution permissions because they all, you are telling bash to read the script and the script uh, uh, has uh, uh, read permissions. But if you want to execute directly, you have to give the script execution uh, permission. Alisa, Alisa, what line are you referring to when you ask that, that this line go in our script? Which line? No, no, the change permission, you write your script and then in the command line, you change the permissions for the, for the script. But you have already written your script.
let me see. Mm. Marinas, do you have these permissions? Can you do a ls minus l and paste the the result in the chat line? No, I, I, ls minus l, the name of your script, and please uh, paste the result. Okay, the, the script has execution permissions. Now call the script. I want to see the error. So run your script and show me the error, please. Parinas, can you share your screen for the terminal window? So we can see why you are getting that, that error. After the uh, after the you, you have permissions in your script, the way to run it is, for example, if your script is in the prime directory, you are going to run this way. My script. You have to qualify the path of the script. This means to qualify. Why? Remember yesterday we were talking about path. But the, the bash is going to look, if you just write 
uh, this way my script. Bash is going to look for a program, a script, whatever, in the path, in the different directories that are uh, specified in the path. Uh, if, if he doesn't find nothing with that name, he's going to say probably command not found. So you have to qualify. You can qualify, for example, I don't know, maybe your home directory and then my script or this way. Ah, okay. No. Uh, Christopher, can you, maybe if you want to share your screen and, and can show us how, how are you writing? I'm going to close my share so you can share your screen. Christopher, if you please can share your screen and show us what, what is the problem you are having. Hi, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, can you I, get a wider, wider screen, please? A wider yeah, for screen. sure. Is that better? Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Um, so I guess for question two, what I did was just kind of move to the scratch directory, remove anything that was old there, make a new directory, um, change into it, download the data, untar it, and then CD to that directory. Um, as a first question, if I use a for loop in bash and I for over like all the files that would be below me in that directory, what is that thing that I'm iterating over? Is it like a vector and can I take like elements? Of what, what you can do, Christopher, first, is sometimes uh, in order to not have unexpected results, you, can, you could test that for loop. How? Instead of the line number 23? Yeah. Maybe you can comment the line? Yeah. And just do an echo file. Uh, sorry, a dollar sign file. Ah, uh, yes. And run this, run this to see how uh, it's being interpreted. Yes. Uh, oh. Sorry, I'm not in teach right now. Um, let me just uh, SSH into teach. No, you're uh, control C. Control C, yes. So it just lists all of the the files along with their 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 kind of 
path location relative to where I started the the kind of ls star star okay. slash star command. So these are the files that uh, that ls finding. Can we see it again the for the for loop? Yeah, absolutely. So so what it is that that I that I've created is it like a vector or is it a list or is it bash doesn't have those kind of constructs let me see you are renaming the file just when i'm at the iterator like so if i was in r or python i would be kind of like iterating over a vector or iterating over a list or something like that. So it, conceptually, am I doing the same thing? But we, we already know the result of this because it's all the files that were listed. OK. okay. So it's just a list of all the files. That's what I yes. think of it. So okay. echo, echo dollar sign file it just showed us what the for loop found. OK. Now we are going to, now we need to see uh, the next line that is commented at this moment. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so then what I was thinking was that I would try to get the directory part of that file name using dir name. I would try to get the actual file part of the file name using base name. But then I would try to trim out everything, like all of the, 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 the dot data and dot text part of it using I suppose this little like series of text manipulation tools, and then I would append dot data there. But if I was in R Python, what I might do, I think, is be like dir name equals whatever the dir name command is, and base name is equal to whatever the base name is, and then I would try to say like final string or something is equal to like the paste of name and base name or or what have you and then put everything into um so like move dollar sign file and final underscore string or something like that Th does that kind of idea like is it useful or am i better trying to just create like a very complicated one liner that's hard to kind of understand you can do, you can do the, the, the 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 two ways but of course, this the, the, the way is only everything is in one line. That is not a problem. Okay. But may I suggest that you test the line? So, uh, copy the line, please. Yeah. So copy the line. And, and admittedly, I don't think it's the greatest solution whatsoever. But um, yeah, I'd value your thoughts but on how to improve no, it. Copy the line and let's go to the to the common line. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry there and I'll copy this line, this entire line here. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, back in terminal and just paste okay. it. Now give uh, any value to, to the variable file. So file equals. File equals. No, you don't, you cannot use the spaces there. File. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Well, uh, 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 slash BBB. <laughs> Let's say that. Uh, like this? No, a a a a a. Yeah. A slash b b b b. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A slash, a slash. Not back a slash. That one. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Now echo. Echo. Space oh, and past. No, past. No, 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 no. Yeah. Past, no, past your line. Past yeah. your line. Enter. We are going to see how it's interpreted. MB. The name of the file is right. And your the, the line is correct. You are getting what you want, right? Yes. So now it should work. So it, I think it does work, but I just wonder about the idea. Like, is that a good solution in Bash or like? It's a would... good. It's a good solution. It depends. For example, if you are doing a script for, just for yourself, you can do that way. But if you are writing a script that many people is going to update or write or anything, you must make it easy for other people to read your script and to understand what you were trying to do. 
So if you first assign variables with uh, the, the base name, the name, blah, 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 and then move from here to there, if somebody is going to modify your script in one year time, can easily understand what you try to do, even yourself. Let's say you are going to modify this script in one year. You, have to, you are going to have to ask yourself what I was trying to do. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of places there, right, where I'm kind but, but of concatenating text here. Right. The, the construction is perfectly right, and, and, and it works. So it, it, it's valid. So if, you okay. if, the, if the construction is valid, yes, it is. OK. Just one other question. If I'm pasting together parts of strings, so like I have the, the string from the dir name part, and then I have the string for slash, and then I have the string from base name, and I have the string for the new dot data suffix, you yes. just put these beside each other, and that yes. is Bash's command to paste yes. these things Sometimes in order, in order to avoid uh, that the shell confuses about the names. When you have uh, several variables uh, concatenated without a space, without anything, you should enclose the name of the variable in brackets. Okay. In brackets. So, so that would be kind of like here where I, I, I just haven't. Go, go to the variable file. Yeah, so and, dollar and sign. Enclose it in, 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 in in brackets. In brackets. Show you how, how it works. Or like this? A bracket. Uh, bracket. Oh no, no open dollar sign. No, dollar sign. No, no, no. You don't need parentheses here. Okay, my apologies. Okay. Bracket. No. <laughs> okay. Do an echo. Echo dollar sign file. Okay. Okay, now the same comment. Yeah. After the dollar sign. Open in bracket. Yeah. And that, no, bracket. Bracket. This? No, this is a square bracket. This? And this a one. At the end, the closing, the closing bracket. Okay. No, at the end. At the end. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay. Enter. You see, you get the same result. This is, these brackets tell the, the shell. This is the name of the variable because if you write several variables one by one, the, the shell may get confused and add the names. So so it's going to 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 produce nothing because the variable actually doesn't exist. So this way you you say to the shell that this is the name of the variable. In, okay. Which is enclosed in the square brackets. Anyway, sorry, in brackets. The square brackets are the other ones. Thank you for going through the solution with me, um, Marco. I, I greatly appreciate it. And I learned a lot about brackets, braces, and parentheses. <laughs> no, my pleasure. Thank you. I'll stop sharing my screen now. OK. Any more, more questions?
Uh, no, it, it's not mandatory to add the, the shebang uh, because if you are running a script under bash, the default interpreter is bash. But in order to, as a good practice, so you, when you are reading your script uh, after some time, you know that this is a bash script because the interpreter is bash. If you are writing a, a script to be interpreted, it's, an, in, in, no, it's not only an annotation, the system will read that only first line, despite that is commented, uh, is it, the system is going to read that line and is going to use that interpreter. For example, here, uh, my first example was beam bash. So the system is going to use beam bash as the interpreter of the script. So it's going to run all the comments in, in the script line by line using bash. So Again, the default under bash is bash. So if I don't add this line, the shell bash is going to, inter to, to interpret it with itself, with bash, because it's the default. But if you write, for example, something in Perl, in this case, it's mandatory to, to let the system know that you are going to, to, to run a pair script or a Python, a Python script, for example. So as a good practice, despite that is not mandatory, as a good practice, it's recommended that you use the shebang every time that you write a script. No, uh, well, th there is actually a difference. Let's say, for example, this is your common prompt and you are calling your script as, as I put in, in, my, in my example before. In this case, uh, the script is going to execute because it already has execution permissions. We are assuming that it has execution permissions. It's going to execute within this shell. If you do this type of, of uh, you call your script this way, it's going to work, but it's going to initiate another bash, another shell. Sometimes it's good to have another shell, sometimes it's, it doesn't matter. Because you have, a sh you can initiate a shell inside another shell. But basically, the results should be the same. Any more questions? Okay, this is a, no, this is a way how to use substring. So you have a string that is called in a, in, a, in a variable that is called file, and you just want to use part of that uh, screen. Uh, 
this is a little bit complex. Uh, if you want to, to know more about this, uh, man bash. Because there are many, many tricks. You can extract, for example, the first letter of the variable, the last character of the variable, three characters in the middle. Uh, you can replace, uh, in this case, with, uh, with a pound symbol, you can replace uh, characters uh, in, in, in the variable. Uh, you can uh, make a rule to replace one character with another. So there are very formulas, uh, very, several formulas that you can use. Uh, you, the real documentation for this is man bash. In, in the, uh, as I showed you yesterday, the manual is very long. It's about 4,000 lines. So when you are reading that man, you can uh, search, slash is the search uh, byte uh, for substrings. So a slash substrings. And it will show you the different way to, to do substrings. I'm going to share one moment. I'm going to. This is the portion of the man bash. So where, where you can see this kind of a construction. So you can replace, you can have here, for example, a, is the, the pound characters. So there are many, many different formulas that you can use uh, for, for manipulating uh, substrings. Any more questions? No, it makes sense. If, if you are running a command or a, a, a script, for example, you can write a script and the result of the execution of that script to be redirected to a variable. So, because inside the script, you can run another script and maybe you want the result of that second script to be put in a variable. So you can use that variable in your first script. So yes, it makes sense.
Christopher, I'm going to change. Uh, I'm going to show you how how do you do that. So let's say, for example, you have this comment, which will list all the files in, in this directory. I can, I can uh, redirect that to, to a variable. For example, I can do uh, a variable called list equals, so it's the assignment, the way that I assign. There are two ways, one is dollar sign and parentheses. And, and here I can write the comment, for example, ls minus l. So now the result of that, uh, of that comment is inside a variable. So if I do a echo dollar sign list, so I expand the value of the variable, I'm going to get what is kept in that variable which is this well, and it, I think we have to format. Yes. Another way is you can use this type of construction or the other, the, the, another way is to, anyway, is to use, uh, I don't remember the name of this symbol this is another way. Sorry. And this is. So now, if I do an echo, please, I'm going to get the same. Back quote. The name of that symbol is back quote. So inside a script, you can run a comment. Mm, redirect the x the uh, output of that comment to a variable and then later in the script you can use uh, what is in that variable for i don't know many things Uh, yes, basically variables only exist in that instance. But, uh, and that one is one of the difference between this and this. For example, if I have a variable, let's say before running my script, I created a variable, let's say, uh, var equals uh, uh, me, my name. Uh, if, when I call the, this script, this variable is not going to be in, in, in the execution of the script because it belongs to this instance of bash. If I want to inherit the variable, I have to export the variable. How do you export a variable? You just write this, well, construction, export var me. In this case, uh, the, the variable is exported to the uh, child batch, uh, instances of batch that is executing. There is, you can do that, you can export this way, or the other way is if you already declare the variable, then you, the next you can do is export one. You are doing here in, in one single line, you are using here two lines to do the same.
but you have to export the variable if you want that variable to be inherited to the next uh, instances of bash. Any more questions? Okay, if there is, there are no more questions, uh, we are going to end the meeting. Uh, may I remind you that uh, to submit the assignment uh, up to tonight, uh, to midnight, either if it's complete or not. And uh, anyway, you can ask questions on the forum. Uh, don't forget the attendee code is number five.